So while I've argued that there are many ways in which a room can become well mixed, hopefully well enough to apply our well mixed criterion for airborne transmission through long range aerosols, there is one very important way in which the transmission problem is never well mixed, and that is taking into account the source of the particles, which is the exhaling of an infected individual, which leads to a very high concentration of particles leaving the mouth, which then ends up being dispersed throughout the room, and there is a sort of space and time dependence of that process which we must consider uh, in looking at other m possibilities of transmission than just the well-mixed background air. <clears throat> so in particular, the, uh, I've already indicated that the flows generated by breathing tend to be at higher enough Reynolds number to generate turbulence. And in particular, they generate a turbulent uh, jet, which ends up taking the form of a cone. Not perfectly, but approximately a cone. <clears throat> which means that the radius of the jet is uh, alpha times the uh, position of the jet here. So if I write uh, a coordinate system, you know, which uh, Z, a cylindrical coordinate system where Z is the direction of the flow and R is the radial coordinate, uh, then that's the cone and the cone angle is alpha. The term alpha uh, also has a physical interpretation as the air entrainment coefficient. And for respiratory jets in the air, uh, this coefficient is usually around 0.1 to 0.15. Um, so that gives you basically the opening angle of the, uh, of the cone. So uh, I will come, uh, come to uh, explaining and deriving uh, why the jet has uh, the shape of a cone, but let's just assume that, and let's continue with the assumption that the flow is at high Reynolds number, which means it's dominated by inertia, by kinetic energy, and by the tendency for the fluid to keep wanting to move in a new direction. Now, if the fluid coming out of the mouth were just being spit out at a very high rate, you might imagine a very narrow uh, kind of uh, you know stream, of, of air, but the reason it's widening is that air is actually being entrained, is that some of the ambient air is being sucked in, and this is making the jet have more and more fluid in it, but then that fluid is sharing the momentum, it's also spreading and diffusing the particles, and the wider it gets, the more it slows down, because now that momentum is being shared through the uh, sort of turbulent uh, exchange going on. So we can, let's do that calculation. So we have, um, uh, so just remind you that we are in a situation of very high Reynolds number typically, and we will assume that there is roughly, and it's actually a good assumption, roughly a constant momentum flux. What that means is I take a slice here and I look at essentially the kinetic energy density or the momentum per time that is crossing uh, a slice of the jet, that that actually should be conserved. And so if I write that momentum flux as uh, capital K is the area of the cross section, pi r squared, if I look at a given uh, position r here. Um, and then I have uh, um, the, the momentum is, is the density of the fluid, which is the air, um, times uh, the, the velocity field, the velocity. And that, so that's momentum. Momentum flux would be momentum times velocity or rho v squared, which is also kinetic energy density, this quantity should be roughly constant. So we can now solve for the average velocity, uh, v bar, which uh, would be a square root of k over pi uh, rho a times 1 over r, after we take the square root, but then because we have a cone, r is alpha z, so this is square root of k over pi a, uh, one over alpha z. So we can see the velocity is decaying like one over distance uh, from the mouth. So it is, the jet is slowing down, uh, but it's still, uh, of course, continuing to advance as the momentum is being shared across a larger and larger area of entrained turbulent uh, flow. So, 
we can now use this result to uh, figure out what is the rate of progress of the front. So if I call this uh, Z of the front, so let's say when I first start exhaling, there's kind of a wall of droplets, and I can sketch that this flow is actually full of droplets that we're interested in tracking. I'd like to know, you know, how are those are first leaving the mouth? Well, I can write that this velocity is at a given position corresponding to the front is dzf dt. And if this is zf, so I apply this at the front, then I can put the zf on the other side and I have zf dzf dt is equal to square root of k over pi uh, rho a. Um, and then I've got, uh, I guess, also uh, an alpha or one over alpha. And then this expression here can be written as one half times the derivative of zf squared. So I can then solve for the position of the front and I find zf is equal to, uh, well, let's see what I get. I get, um, I put the two on the other side and I take a square root. So I get two over alpha to the one half. I get k over pi rho a, it was square root. And then I take another square root. So I get a one quarter and then I get t to the one half. Um, because when I integrate this equation, I get the zf squared is all this stuff uh, times t. Okay, starting from t equals zero. So we find is that initially the uh, jet starts to progress like square root of time. And so this coefficient here is some kind of like, has the units of a diffusivity. So it's kind of like appears that the jet is sort of diffusing. Um, you could call this uh, d effective, you know, sort of for, for, the, for the front of the jet, okay? But that doesn't last forever because at some point the person, you know, closes their mouth and starts breathing in again and maybe even pulls the, 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 the fluid back a little bit. Uh, but not too much because it has momentum and it keeps moving forward. So when somebody breathes, um, it starts out looking like that. But then in a later time, if I draw the same uh, person again, uh, then, in fact, actually, let me draw him with a closed mouth. Uh, because he's just finished, uh, let's say, exhaling and is getting ready for his next breath. So now this blob of fluid has kind of worked its way out, and it's now uh, somewhere out here, okay? And this is what we call a puff. So if you're smoking, for example, a cigarette, you know that you can create a puff of smoke by just releasing a finite amount of fluid, and then it kind of goes out and it makes some interesting patterns and usually is very turbulent unless you're very careful in trying to control it. Um, and of course, this contains lots of these droplets that we're interested in. And so then now we could briefly ask, how fast does the puff move? Well, you see here, the fluid keeps moving because it's constantly being given momentum. So if it's a steady jet, as you're breathing, you're pushing, pushing, pushing. And so this thing keeps moving like square root of air T, it keeps entraining more. But as soon as you stop giving it more momentum, you gave it just a finite amount of momentum, then the puff actually slows down. It doesn't keep pushing ahead as quickly. It also doesn't entrain more air as quickly either. And we can do a very simple argument to see what happens to the scaling. So this momentum flux here was a constant momentum flux in the case of a jet. But here in the case of a puff, um, we could maybe as a very crude estimate, just say that the momentum flux is uh, something now replaced by some you know, kind of constant value that is maintained only for a time TB, which is the time of the breath and then averaged over a longer period of time. So if you think of this as kind of like a, you know, an average momentum flux, we've injected some momentum flux, but then we took it away. And so if I wanna find out the average over a period of time t, I have to divide by t. Um, so you see if I do that then, I arrive that in the puff case, that the position of the, of the front or of the puff is a lot of these same constants here, but is now uh, scaling as t to the one quarter, because if my k has a one over uh, one over t in it, and it's raised to one quarter power, then I end up with zf goes like t to the one quarter. So it slows down. So first it was sort of square root of time. Now it's becoming more fourth order of time. And it's, so it's, it's almost just sort of sitting there. It's not progressing that much. And then a new breath comes. And so that's what happens next. 
And especially if one is speaking or singing, then the exhaling is a much longer and more continuous process than the inhaling, which is very sudden. So you talk and you take a breath and you talk. And so there's a lot more of this going on than this, even in normal speech and in normal breathing to some extent as well, but especially when one is speaking. And so an interesting uh, development then is that if we have a person who is uh, speaking, then we can generate uh, what has been called a puff train. So we have, you know, here's the most recent, uh, you know, new breath, you know, getting exhaled. And then the previous one was, you know, here, still kind of floating around. And the one ahead of that is dispersed a bit more, but it hasn't progressed as far. And so it's a little bit thinner. And if we kind of color each breath, you know, a different way, then what we're left with is something that actually looks an awful lot like a continuous cone again. So this is a puff train. This could be, for example, from speaking or singing. And overall, the behavior is quite similar uh, to a jet, just where the K is replaced by the time average momentum flux. So I should mention that this way of thinking here uh, was recently introduced and verified experimentally in a paper by um, um, Ab Abkaranian uh, and Howard Stone uh, and collaborators. Uh, and also introduce this uh, notion of, of the scaling and, and show that actually the puff train has a scaling which is very similar to the initial jet with the square root of time. Uh, and so that's an important concept we'll come to now because we want to ask now what if somebody is speaking and or even just breathing continuously in a certain direction and generating aerosol particles, how does their concentration evolve in this sort of a respiratory plume or jet?